High Adventure. Tonight, Ron Evans takes us on a dangerous Pacific War assignment in his story entitled The Interrogators. Welcome on board, sir. May I offer you a drink? Uh, let's see. I uh, have gin, whiskey, oh, and a bottle of brandy. Some of the genuine French stuff, sir. Whiskey and water will do. Thank you, Lieutenant. I heard you were in the area, sir. In fact, I rather anticipated an inspection. I'm not here for an inspection. You'll have me on board for your next voyage. Something quite special, eh? Oh, I see, sir. Hmm. Well, it's going to be quite a squeeze. You have a spare cabin? <laughs> Hardly up to your uh, standard, sir. Does it matter? You'll be using it, and I shall use this cabin. Oh. Uh, yes, of course, sir. Uh, will you be staying tonight? No, I'll have to. Uh, we sail in an hour. A barge will be alongside shortly to top up the long-range fuel tanks. So soon, sir? It's top security from this moment, Lieutenant. This is an opportunity we've been waiting months for. Indeed, the very reason why we've kept this captured Japanese motor torpedo boat in these waters. I see. We've cracked the latest Jap code, and we're going to snatch somebody more than the usual Jap soldier, old chap. A general, no less. In fact, General Kobayashi himself. Kobayashi? But he never leaves the Philippines. Sir. And that's where we're bound, Lieutenant Wabak. All the way with the Japanese ensign fluttering on our stern. But we, we can't just sail into Manila Harbor. And... If we have to, we will. But an intercepted Jap signal has revealed that the general is making a tour of inspection of the South Philippine coastal defenses. And with luck, we'll nab the blighter with his pants down. I'm Marine Sergeant Haskins, and I was right in on that little lot. Of course, I didn't know where we were off to until long after we'd slipped out to sea from Port Moresby in New Guinea. All the way to the Philippines we were going. It seemed plain nuts to me, even though we did hoist a Jap flag. Still, Lieutenant Commander Spencer Bewley had a heck of a reputation, and that made us feel a bit better, him knowing what he's doing and all that. Well... S-884 had been captured by a Royal Navy frigate the previous year and converted into a fast snatch boat. We used to nip smartishly into an enemy-held area and kidnap a soldier for interrogation. That way, we learnt a lot about what the Japs were up to. But this was different. A ruddy Jap general is something else. It was quite an assignment for ten Marines and a boat crew of only eight men. Even with our long-range fuel tank, we'll be hard put to make it home, sir. Damn it all, man. Then we'll have to steal some fuel. Where there's a will, you know. Yes, if only it were known where Kobayashi will be at a specific time, it would help. Naturally. So we must use our initiative. We do know that ten days from now, he'll be in the Val Gulf area. And that will be our striking point. It's a big area. But not heavily populated, except for the city of Davao itself. We can snatch a Japanese soldier or two and question them. Heaven knows you're well enough experienced in that tactic by now. If a high-ranking general like Kobayashi is close by, then there'll be precious few soldiers who won't know his whereabouts. An act like that could forewarn the Jap military, sir. Of course. But we can't fight wars without taking risks. At all costs, we have to grab Kobayashi and get him on board. And if we can get him back to Port Moresby in one piece, very well. If we get sunk, then you can be sure that Kobayashi will be blowing bubbles with us. It was just after dark when we entered the Gulf of Davao, and the lieutenant commander pointed S-884's bow towards his target, a small fishing village called Bosang. It had a Jap garrison guarding it, which meant it'd be easy to snatch a couple of nips and get them on board before the rest knew what was going on. 
A bit after midnight, we saw the shore lights, and the skipper slowed the engines. I was in charge of the other nine marine commandos, and we stood on the deck, fully kitted, our faces blackened, and ready to jump ashore the second we nodded into a likely spot. There was a half moon, which helped in one way, but not in others. Behind us, I could see the skipper peering towards the shore with night glasses. Yes, yes. I can make out two short jetties. Uh, that corresponds with the pilot manual. Uh, depth, two and a half fathoms. Several boats at the nearest one, but the other seems clear. That's where we'll go. Five degrees port. Five degrees port, sir. Haskins knows the drill, does he? Right, second major to him, sir. Well, keep a watch for signals from the shore base, Lieutenant. Bluff them if need be, but reply. I do know the drill, too, sir. Ah, yes, yes, of course, of course. You speak Japanese like the Nips themselves, and uh, this is your ninth mission, isn't it? Eleven. Ready? Ready. Hard port. Hard port, sir. Beautifully manoeuvred. There they go. Like thieves in the night. Which is exactly what they are, old chap. Professional kidnappers. How long will they be, do you think? Well, it depends, sir. But never more than ten minutes. By the sound of it, they're in the village already. The lieutenant had said he wanted a sergeant at least, but an officer if possible. We headed up the jetty and spilled out into the darkened village and threw it towards the nip barracks. On our left, I spotted a modern-looking house with a light on in a window. At the same time, two dark figures turned towards us. They were on the veranda, and I knew they'd seen us. Both wore officers' uniforms, so what could be better? Before the Japs could recover from their surprise, my men had jumped him. <laughs> Down to the boat, lads! Jackson and me will cover your ear. Now, come on, make it snappy! Japs over on the right! They've seen us! Okay, Jackson, you get down to the boat with the others. I'll keep this little lot entertained. Well, there was just one of me, and heaven knows how many of them. And believe it or not, that made it easy. You see, they didn't know what was going on. And they had to be careful for fear of shooting each other. And I made darn sure I kept on the move. I was back on board the boat when the silly blighters were still back there in the village shooting at dogs and shadows. And the skipper was on the ball. No sooner did I jump on board than we were away. Hard astern, and then full belt out into the gulf. Excellent, excellent. The men were absolutely first class, Lieutenant. Two prisoners, eh? And officers to boot. Uh, one officer, sir. And a woman. A woman? A woman, sir. Japanese, by the look of them. This is not a passenger ferry, Lieutenant. Why did the men snatch a woman? Oh, it was dark, and the shooting had already started. Besides, she was wearing an officer's uniform. Oh, she could be a nurse or something like that. I'll find out when I interrogate her. A woman, they do In three hours, we'll be clear of the gulf, sir. No, Lieutenant. We're not leaving the gulf. While you interrogate down below, I'm going to play cat and mouse with the Japs. How do you mean, sir? Use your brains, man. Oh, of course, you're not used to hit and run. Tell me, what will our Nipponese friends be looking for tomorrow morning? Well, I'll tell you. A fast-moving vessel heading south as fast as its screw will turn. And what will I be doing? I'll tell you that as well. Cruising at a moderate speed into the gulf. That way, we'll be taken for a patrol boat hunting for the kidnappers, right? Right, sir. I think. Well, don't gape at me, Lieutenant. Get on with the interrogation. The sooner we know where Kobayashi is, the sooner we can head for home. We had a small cabin which Lieutenant Weimark used specially for interrogations. Two chairs and a small table were the only furnishings. He dealt first with the male prisoner. Yes, yes, your name is Captain Akihira Himero. You've told me that already a dozen times. Now, will you tell me where General Kobayashi is? I do not know at General Kobayashi. You're liar! This is your last chance, Captain Himeno. Where is the general at this moment? I have told you. I do not know. The general's whereabouts are not my concern. Look, if you're going to be no use to me, I can make you swim. With your hands and feet tied together. Is that what you want? I am a prisoner. The decision is yours. No, it's yours. 
Tell me the truth, and I'll ensure you're well treated. That's a promise. I am afraid I cannot answer your question. Now, you will have to kill me if that is to be my punishment. Oh, no, my Nipponese friend. It won't be that easy for you. I'm going to let you think it over for 30 minutes while I interrogate the other prisoner. After that, if you're still so damned brave, I'll beat you within an inch of your life. Then you can swim for it. A woman knows nothing. Let me be the judge of that. Sergeant, chain him down and bring in the other prisoner. And remember, no food or water for either of them until I give the order. All uh, right, sir. Now, come on, you. I've got a nice cold steel floor you can lie on and think. I'll be back with a woman and a chick, sir. Shimura, eh? And you won't tell me what your job is. Why are you wearing a captain's uniform, then? I have no more to say. I know nothing. Oh, but you have plenty to say, my girl. Was it your own uniform? Are you with the military? You will have to draw your own conclusions. I see. Now, you're going to be clever. We'll cure you of that, Miss Shimura. Don't you realize that you're a prisoner? I can do anything I like with you. Even throw you over the side to the sharks. Would you like that? I refuse to be intimidated. Oh, I'm going to enjoy breaking you. It will be your privilege. Make no mistake, I've broken hard enough than you. Within two hours, you'll be begging to be shark food. Now, where is General Koyashi? In Manila. That is his headquarters. Well, I know differently. See? He's here, somewhere along the coast of Davao Gulf. Better tell me. If you know where the general is, then why do you ask me? I've told you I want to know the exact spot. I am sorry. I cannot help you. Oh, you beg to tell me. I swear it. Sergeant! Yes, sir? I'm going on deck for a breather. Keep a close watch on her. If she so much as raises her bottom from that chair, strap her down. Very good, sir. I, uh, I'm sorry, miss, but uh, we've got to do it. I'd hate to see a woman getting smacked about, but you're asking for it. Please, I have nothing to say. They're both playing strong and silent, sir. Well, Lieutenant, why come to me? You're the expert. You are in command, so I want your permission to use... Well, violence. I think you know what I mean, sir. I see. Well, it's not allowed, you know. Officially, that is. Uh, the situation is exceptional, wouldn't you say, sir? True, true. I'll get at the facts a lot quicker. These nips can be as tough as hell. You've used violence interrogating prisoners before, Lieutenant. Are you asking me officially, sir? Unofficially. Yes, sir. I feel it's my duty to get information, regardless of the means. A bad policy, Wymark. A man will confess to anything if the duress is sufficient. But, as you say, these are exceptional circumstances. Yes, I'll give you unofficial permission to use violence, but exercise it with care. Yes, sir. Oh, before you go, there's a condition. Yes? Use it only on the woman. A woman, sir? Why, I don't understand. That is my condition, Lieutenant. You'll understand my motive in due course. The Japanese girl was still sitting at the table with her head bowed when Lieutenant Weimark returned. I felt quite sorry for her, knowing what a bully the lieutenant could be. Right, Osaka Shimura. How old are you? Twenty-two. Hmm. Yes, and you're very pretty. In a fragile oriental way. I've got to tell you something, so listen well. Before you leave this cabin, you'll look thirty years older, and your hair will turn white. Do you understand what I mean? Yes. I am Letty. Are you? Are you really? Let's see, then. <laughs> Lord, I <laughs> said. Haskins, I don't need you here. Get out. Oh, but Get out, I said. 
You are... You are going to kill me? If I have to, yes. Now stand up and lean forwards with your hands on the bulkhead. Come on, quickly! For a minute or so, I listened outside the door. When he made the girl scream, I went to the skipper. Don't panic, Haskins. He has to make her talk, you know. But he'll kill her, sir. I know him when he gets his blood up. It can be ruddy cruel, can the lieutenant? Ah, oh, yes. I can quite believe it. Look, be a good chap and cut along to my cabin, will you? There's a full bottle of gin and a bottle of orange squash. Take it to the interrogation room and, and wait for me there. But, gin and orange? Uh, very good, sir. Hard about there. Stair 142. A bottle of gin and a bottle of orange, Haskins. Have you taken leave of your senses? Lieutenant Commander's orders, sir. Quite correct, Wymock. I want you to relieve me for a while. I've turned about and set a course. I say, Lieutenant, what have you done to this poor girl? Have you dared to beat her? Sir? You Good said... gracious man, don't you realize this is a very serious offense? Contrary to the terms of the Geneva Convention? You could be cashiered if it became public. But, sir, you distinctly told me. Into the bridge this instant, Lieutenant. The course is 142. Hurry now. Well, I was only... Yes, sir. Sergeant, how do you expect me to drink gin and orange without a blessed glass? Go to my cabin and bring two. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, uh, let me look at you, young lady. Ah, you've a couple of nasty bruises there, I see. Well, I really must apologize for that officer's behavior. I'll make him sorry for this, you can be sure. Here. Use my handkerchief. Yes, that's right. Your name's uh, Fusako, isn't it? Yes. I'm Lieutenant Commander Spencer Bewley. But, um, Harry, to my friends. You can call me Harry. I have no wish to. You are an enemy. Well, the, the other's rather a mouthful. I thought that uh, Harry would be easier for you to say. <clears throat> uh, two glasses, sir. Uh, well, put them on the table and close the door when you leave, Sergeant. Uh, yes, sir. Now, this will do you good. I will not blink. Look, my dear Fusako, you're hurt and angry. I understand. But try a little. It'll make you feel so much better. Come along. I know you're thirsty. Why are you doing this? Well, I, I want to make amends. You are not going to question me? Oh, of course not. I just want you to see that we're not all like my lieutenant. Now, come on, drink up and, and let's be friends. That's right. There's a good girl. Are you, uh, are you in pain? No. Where is... Where is my... My friend... What has been done to him? Oh, the gallant Captain Jimeno. Oh, he's all right. I promise you. Here. Have another. I tell you, Fusako, four of these and you'll feel as right as rain. Damn it all, Haskins, where have you been? The skipper called for water, sir. Water? What in heaven's name is he going to do with water? Dilute the gin, sir. He's been over an hour with her. What is going on? Well, uh, if you'll excuse me saying so, sir, both getting blotto. Well, uh, not so much him, but she is. <laughs> the lordships in the Admiralty would never believe it. Is the man a sex maniac or something? <laughs> it's uh, not for me to say, sir. No, 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 of course not, Haskins. Damn it all. This is a ridiculous situation. Here we are, running under the nose of the Japs, and there's the commander trying to seduce a pretty little Japanese piece. It's... it's unbelievable. Yes, yes, very sad, my dear. So the, uh, the captain is your, um, is your, your lover. So you, you took a uniform and, and disguised yourself as an officer and when you went to visit him? No. No, the uniform is my own. You're, um, you're a nurse, I take it. Well, well. No. No, you're long, Halley. A 
decided secretary. Oh, I see. With such a very smart uniform. Hmm. Interesting. If if you're a secretary, why do you have to keep it a secret that uh, you have a lover? <laughs> the general would be very angry with me. <laughs> he does not like Akila very much. And Aki here uh, doesn't like General Kobayashi very much either, I suppose. He hates him. <gasps> what have you made me say? Oh, you were telling me of your love for Captain Hameno. Nothing more, Fusako, nothing more. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me. Where are you going? Oh, duty calls, my dear. I'll have the captain brought in to you, and if all goes well, I'll land you both on a nice romantic beach somewhere. It was lovely talking to you, my dear. Sayonara. Hit the same place again, sir. Again, Lieutenant. Well, they'll be awake and ready for us. I don't think so. Would you, if you were in their boots? Oh, we'd have to be crazy to hit the same place twice in the same night, wouldn't we? Yes, sir. We'd have to be. A slight change of tactic this time, though. I'll drop the Marines about a mile down the beach. Only when the shooting starts will we go in alongside. And if there's no shooting? Ah, now look who's being the optimist. Lieutenant Wymark briefed us, and it must have been getting close to four in the morning when we landed on the beach. This time we expected a tough fight, and we were ready for anything the sons of Nippon could chuck at us. We went in round the back of the village, cut through a wire fence and hit a bungalow that had a general staff car standing outside. What a giveaway. Five stayed outside in the bushes, and me and four of the lads went in and grabbed old General Kobayashi from right out of his bed. We got him as far as the camp gate when the fireworks started. <laughs> it was just like last time. Little bow-legged men running all over the place, shouting and shooting at shadows. We shot a few down and blew many more up with grenades. Charlie Jackson and me played rear guard again. The lads threw the blanket-wrapped general on board and lined the rails to cover our hasty retreat. Charlie caught a bullet in his left ankle, but I hauled him on board as the skipper backed off and turned about. The Japs were running up the jetty, firing wildly, but by then we were already running out of range. And that was that, my friend. It wasn't. You see, the skipper's a gentleman, and he had a promise to keep. the same beach where we'd landed earlier that he dropped off Fusaku and her soldier boyfriend. He went ashore first, but she stayed for a moment and spoke to the skipper. I will still call you Halley. Hi. If ever you see me again, please do. I do not know whether to hate myself or hate you. Hate me, but not yourself. You did nothing wrong, my dear, except perhaps get a little tipsy. Well, you better go now and join your gallant captain. Sayonara. Sayonara. Holly? Wollaston! Wollaston! Well, Lieutenant, it's a long trip home. Nobody's more relieved than I am, sir. Hard aboard there. Hard aboard, sir. Tired, laddie? Not too tired to interrogate a Japanese general, sir. <laughs> uh, yes. But I think that perhaps you'd better leave that to me. Uh, we're out of gin, sir. Will whiskey do? High Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal. 